Tonight marks the conclusion of five games in the span of 15 days across all competition for Toronto FC. As a result, they pull out a 1-1 draw against the Seattle Sounders right here at BMO Field. And Gareth, considering the circumstances, the amount of injuries that TFC has been plagued with, this was a pretty good result. It, I would take a point in a match like this any day of the week. Listen, there will be a lot of fans that will say three points were there for the taking, especially considering the chances that Toronto FC had in the first half. But let's be real. This team just won the Canadian Championship, hoisted the Voyagers Cup Wednesday across the country. And and played really a skeleton squad here tonight. You can make the argument that only about three, maybe four regular players were in the starting 11. Uh, so you either got to rest some of your key players tonight, and there was others out through injury as well. So I think it was a really important occasion for some players to step up, show what they're all about, and really prove that this team has depth going forward. The point though, Danielle, for me is fair. Seattle was a difficult team in the second half of play. I thought the Sounders did very well. Speaking of players that showed what they were capable of tonight, Mark Bloom hadn't had a start since October 2014 and playing out of position tonight. Well, that's the thing. They played a 3-5-2 or a 5-3-2, however <laughs> you want to shape it. And Mark Bloom typically plays on the right side. He had to play on the left, and he had a big moment clearing the ball off the line to preserve the 1-1 scoreline. I thought he played very well. And across the back line, even a player like Nick Hagland, who's forced his way back in the team with Stephen Bainisher missing a couple games, thought he did exceptionally exceptionally well and Damian Perky is coming back in and leading from the back. I thought that they all played very well defensively for TFC tonight. Let's shift gears a little bit. Talk about things offensively. Jordan Hamilton goals in back to back MLS games. Yeah, and he looks very much the part, doesn't he, Danielle? He's confident. He's quick on the ball. And this is what the question has been. If Sebastian Javinko is not scoring and Seba missed a glorious chance in the first <laughs> half of play, who's going to step up and provide the goals? Now Jordan's done that not only in the Amway Canadian Championships, but back-to-back -back games in MLS. I think that they've they're playing him in the right role, in a higher role up front, using his pace, something that the team desperately needed, and I think he fits the bill to a T. I like that you reference Sebastian Javinko. I mean, Seba has set the bar so high for yes. himself, and given that he's now in a bit of a scoring drought, it is this as to be expected when it comes to someone who's constantly scoring goals? All players go through this. It's just unexpected because of his strike rate last season. It was so good. Just going to take some time and patience. Perhaps this week off comes at the exact right time to get Seba right back on track. You said it right, Gareth. Toronto FC's next matchup will come on July 9th against the Chicago Fire, hosted right here at BMO Field. For all of your other content and updates, make sure you head over to torontofc.ca.